Welcome to rebuilding three Stuart steam plants part 6. A few components of this engine have chilled castings. This makes it difficult to get a good finish when machining. In some cases grinding the chilled parts is an option. I am working on the flywheel which has a chilled outer edge. I will explain some more about chilling later on in the video. What I need to do first though is make a mandrel to mount the flywheel on so I can turn it. This is a piece of scrap steel bar that I found in a box and it's perfect for the job. I just need to turn it down to the correct diameter to accept the flywheel. In no time at all I got very close to the correct diameter. I'm trying the flywheel in place but it's still a bit tight. This clip shows the chilling effect on the outer edge of the flywheel. Chilling is when the casting cools too quickly in a certain area. Chilled parts are very common, particularly steam chest covers, the corners thereof. One solution is to use a grinder on the chilled areas and I'll show this later on in the video. Once upon a time I used to obsessively read the writings of Curly Lawrence, LBSC and model engineer. And I remember from many years ago reading an article where he said the best way to get rid of chilled castings is to simply put them in a domestic coal fire and just leave them there. The temperature isn't hot enough to melt the cast iron and when the fire dies out and cools very slowly, the chilling disappears. I can't verify this because I've never done it, but I would trust the teachings of LBSC. Someone's had a go at the edge of this flywheel with a file to no avail. Back to the lathe. This is the final cut to make the part the right size, or almost the right size. I would always turn just slightly oversize and finish off with wet to dry sandpaper. Maybe that's not good engineering, but it's the way that I do it. Because I am not a good engineer, but I'm actually quite a good musician. I need to remove just a tiny bit more metal. I don't want to remove too much, otherwise the mandrel will be useless. I think that after a bit of wet to dry sandpaper treatment, this should be okay. It's time to drill the end. For this I'm using a centre drill, because what I will end up doing is fitting a live centre for when I get through the chilled area. That way I should get quite a good machine finish. I'd like to mention that this chilling doesn't go all the way through the parts, it's localised. It's a little bit like case hardening, which gives a very hard outer skin to the metal. Once you get through the chilled area, you can machine as normal. Here's the current sequence. I'm using wet to dry sandpaper to finish off the mandrel. It's still slightly tight, but after using the 400 grit wet to dry sandpaper for the final time, it is a perfect fit. Look at the finish on the centre boss. This is not very good, and it's a sure sign of chilling. It's not a problem, I'm going to leave this just as it is. I tighten the grub screw to secure the flywheel to the mandrel. You can actually hear how hard the metal is, and as soon as I touched it with the lathe tool, it spun round. To prevent this from happening, I re-tightened the Allen grub screw using a pair of pliers on the Allen key. Just listen to that sound, the horrible high-pitched shriek. I'm going to try and get through the chilled part, and so far it's sort of working. Although with a sound like that, it's a sure sign that I'm not going to get a good finish, but I persevered anyway. I removed a little bit more metal in an attempt to get through the skin of the chilled area. Really, I should have fitted a life centre up against the mandrel. That would keep everything extremely rigid. I didn't do that at this stage because I wanted to really illustrate the sound of chilling which is actually not dissimilar from the sound made by a blunt lathe tool, but in this case that's not right because this is a new one and it's very sharp. The resonant frequency of the tool against the work makes a pretty pattern, and it's really a horrible pretty pattern, and you don't want to see it in a model steam engine. I have a fitting that I made for the Myford that allows me to mount a holder on the cross slide for a Proxon motor tool. I really couldn't be bothered setting all that up. This is not much of a job. 
I fitted a grinder to my Proxon motor tool and physically held it in place up against the tool post. And it did the trick. It removed the nice pretty pattern. It's still possible to get this chatter pattern even if the parts aren't chilled. I'm using a grinder which is doing the job very well. But you can often get rid of the pattern by running the lathe in back gear very slowly. As you can see, there are still some traces of the pattern left, but I think I've got through the chilled area, so now it's time to insert the life centre and turn it in the normal way. And look, it's not chilled anymore, and it's turning beautifully. The edge is still a bit hard, but I slowed the lathe down, although in my machining sequences, I generally speed up the process in the video editor, so you can't really see how fast or slow I'm going. A general rule for getting rid of chatter marks is to run the lathe really slowly and return the affected area. Here I'm using a file just to remove the sharp edges. Don't forget 90 degree cuts are razor sharp. This is quite a handy sized file I found in the box in the workshop. It's not a needle file and it's not a big clumsy heavy file. I'm finishing off the job using 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper. And to the viewers who know a lot more than me who are writing to tell me that it's really called silicon carbide paper, I am aware of this, but it's easier to say wet or dry than a silicon carbide. Here's a flashback to the flywheel before I machined away the chilled part. And as you can clearly see from this image, it really didn't look very good to start with. I thought it would treat the front face to a bit of wet or dry sandpaper to give it a really good finish. All traces of any chatter marks have now gone. It's okay having one side of the flywheel nice and shiny, what about the other side? Here I'm turning it round on the mandrel and using wet or dry sandpaper one more time to clean up the other side. This proves stubborn because there were some rust marks on there, so I used the Proxon motor tool with one of these rotary abrasive things. And after a while it was starting to look a bit better, but I still had to apply some more wet or dry sandpaper to make it shine. All I have to do now is remove the flywheel from the mandrel and that's the job done. In the final part of this episode I'm starting the cleaning of the steam chests by removing the rust from the inside. This is what can happen if you don't feed WD-40 followed by steam oil through the piping into the engine after a steam run to chase away the water. These small parts contained a lot of rust. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.